popularity and use of traditional skid-on-frame kayaks has grown in recent years. Though they are still often viewed as a novelty used but only by fanatics, there is a rich history and useful skill set associated with their construction and use that can be applied to modern day paddling. The first thing that typically comes to the mind of a kayaker when the terms Greenland style or skin on frame are used is technical rolling skills. And yes, Greenland style rolling techniques are very efficient and useful, and often done in skin on frames. But what needs to be remembered is that kayaks were originally designed to be used for hunting paddling long distances in the search of marine mammals for sustenance. They were designed to be used in adverse and varied conditions. For the Inuit seal hunters, they weren't a toy for practicing their rolling. They were their key to survival. I've built three skin on frame kayaks now, and I love paddling them. Just as was done hundreds of years ago, each one is built to fit a certain paddler and designed to be used in certain conditions. Because of this, no two are the same, and each has their own character, with each builder having their own design motifs that they like. Because of this, you can often tell who built a certain kayak, just based on the shape of the gunnels or the profile of the cockpit coming. So when you start off making a kayak, you start off with a few key measurements, such as where your balance point is when you're sitting down, where your toes and your heels sit, where your knees are, where your butt is, and where your back is. And also, obviously, the width of your hips and the height of your legs. And then based on those few dimensions, you end up with the width of the kayak at its widest points, position of the masik, the beam where your legs come into contact with the kayak. Based on where your feet and heels are, you'll end up with beams spaced out, so you either hit them, as in the balls of your toes, or you miss them around your, your knees and your shins. And then you also end up with the position of the easter peak beam that goes behind your back. And then really from that, you can make the kayak whatever you want. Add more volume in the bow and stern, add more rocker to make it better in rough water, make it more maneuverable, make it low and flat and very long so it's very fast. Give it a low back deck, low foredeck, make it a great roller. Give it more volume, make it a touring kayak. You can make these kayaks whatever you want them to be. That's the really exciting thing about them. As you can see from the way this fits, it's very tight. I only have about a quarter inch on each side of my hips between my hips and the gunnels. And about, if I straighten my legs out flat, I have about an inch between my legs and the mossy that. Back here, I've got about a fist and two fingers between my back and the Easter Peak. And then a few inches behind the Easter Peak the back of the combing. So one thing you'll probably notice is the length of the cockpit combing. So a nori here has a very long cockpit, but quite narrow. Uh, Serena, as she's called, also has a pretty long cockpit combing. But Veritas on the end has a very small combing. It's almost round. And most traditional Greenland kayaks have a very round cockpit. But if we stretch out that length, we stretch that combing out so it goes further behind you where you're sitting. You can put it behind the Easter Peak, the beam that's right here. It makes layback rolling that much easier. Like so. These kayaks are remarkably tough. I've heard stories of people losing them off the top of their cars at freeway speeds. The, they might break a rib, dent a chine, but they, usually they burn through the skin due to the friction. But you can just cut the skin off fix whatever's broken, sew a new one back on, you have a brand new kayak ready to go. Very simple to repair. Traditionally, kayaks are made out of driftwood that was washed up in the shores in the Arctic. Nowadays, dimensional lumber makes building kayaks very easy and affordable, and not very time consuming. A first time builder can expect to spend 40 to 60 hours on their first kayak. With a more experienced builder, the time might be down closer to 30. To cover the frames, Inuit people would use seal skin. Nowadays, people use a number of different fabrics to coat the outside of the kayaks. This one uses ballistic nylon. Other people use Dacron, some people use polyester, some use canvas. Then to, to waterproof the skin, some people use urethane like I have on here. Other people use aircraft goop. Um, in Greenland, they'll often just use house paint and put layer upon layer on it to make it waterproof. A fancy paint job isn't required. 
but it certainly gives them character. And those more artistic than me can freehand designs. No tape required. Really, it doesn't matter what a kayak is made out of, whether you use seal skin and driftwood or modern dimensional lumber and synthetic fibers. It doesn't matter how traditional a kayak is as far as materials or design. What matters is that you end up with a kayak that works for you, that paddles well, that you have fun in. A kayak that is correct is one that fits you and does the job it was intended to do. That job is as varied as the people that paddle it. So you can make these kayaks whatever you want them to be. Does it do what it was supposed to do? That's really the be all and end all, in my opinion. The world of traditional skin and frame kayaks is much deeper and more complex than I could ever hope to learn. Let alone cover in a few minute video for YouTube. And I didn't even get into how traditional kayak design influences modern production kayaks. Now there's a topic that might take a little bit of time to explain. To wrap this all up, all I'm going to say is that the more I learn about the history of kayaking, the more I am astonished by the elegance of traditional kayaks and skill. And most of all, I am continually inspired by the people that created them. That is what keeps me driven to learn and practice more and become the best paddler I can be. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. If you have any questions about traditional kayaks or paddling skills, please drop me a line and I'll do my best to answer your questions in a future video. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just look for me at Kayak to the Sea. Thanks again for watching. Safe paddling. Let's do that again. It's entertaining. <laughs> it's a little bit too much. <laughs> and that's about all I got. <laughs>